Welcome back on this Tuesday to These Things Are Written. Glad that you're joining us again as we continue to look at the book of 1 Thessalonians, Paul's first letter to the church in Thessalonica. We read a little bit about that, uh, about the introduction, the first chapter, which is really the welcoming part of the letter. It's the from, the to, the greetings, and then the, the long thanks, where he gives thanks, not to them, but to God for them always. Let's continue now as he talks more about that history he has with them in chapter 2. For you yourselves know, brothers, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully treated in Philippi, as you know, we had boldness in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in the midst of much conflict. For our appeal does not spring from error or impurity or any attempt to deceive. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak not to please man, but to please God, who tests our hearts. For we never came with words of flattery, as you know, nor with a pretext for greed. God is witness. Nor did we seek glory from people, whether from you or from others though we could have made demands as apostles of Christ, but we were gentle among you, like a nursing mother taking care of her own children. So, being affectionately desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you had become very dear to us. For you remember, brothers, our labor and toil, we worked night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses and God also. How holy and righteous and blameless was our conduct toward you believers. For you know how, or like a father with his children, we exhorted each one of you and encouraged you and charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. This is the word of the Lord. If you want to find out a little bit more history, I really recommend you read the first part of Acts chapter 17 for more information, but I'll give you just a little bit of summary. This happens after Philippi. So after he is pretty much run out of Philippi, he goes to Thessalonica, and as there's a synagogue there, he begins preaching in the synagogue. As he is preaching in the synagogue, they after a while, they kick him out. He goes to the next door place. It is... Uh, or goes to another place he's staying with Jason and bringing more people there to believe in him. The Jews become jealous and they create a riot against Paul. Um, he, Paul is able to escape, but they, they arrest Jason, whose house they are staying in. And after Jason puts up a, a, a bond, basically, they let him go. And Paul and Timothy and Silas move on to another town, another city, the city of Berea. But as Paul is speaking here, he reminds them of the purity of his message that he gave. We have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. It did not spring from error or from impurity, or he says any attempt to deceive. We didn't come with words of flattery. It wasn't about the money. And then later on, he talks about how he labored and toiled in difficulty for them. He speaks in ways of them that shows his love for them in two different ways of, of his affection as a mother of how he, like a, a nursing mother taking care of her own children. As they were young in the faith, he wanted to be there for them and help them to continue to grow in that faith, sharing the gospel with them. But not just the gospel, he says, our very own selves, their lives. So as a, the affection as a mother, but also as a father. Like a father with his children, we exhorted each one of you and encouraged you and charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God, who calls you 
into his own kingdom. See, the caring and compassion of a mother and the exhortation and encouragement of a father to know Jesus and to walk in his ways. That's what God desires for them. You know, that's what God desires for us. He desires us to know Jesus. He desires us to live our lives, to walk in a manner worthy of God, of the one who called us into his own kingdom and glory. He has called us, called us. He has brought us to himself. I pray, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that God would lead you, that he would lead you uh, to walk in his way. And may you be the ones that show that same gentleness and that same patience and love with those around you so that they too may know Jesus. Go in peace. Come back tomorrow and we'll continue looking at this great book of First Thessalonians.